everybody, Tommy Johns here. I'm here with my best friend, Roosevelt Rat, and Roosevelt, Roosevelt, no, wake up, wake up. This is no time to be taking a nap. And no, it's time to start the show. <laughs> what? What do you mean call you when the kids get here? The kids are not coming to the show. What? No, we had a meeting about this. Remember, we had a meeting. The, the bird was there. The, uh, the hippopotamus was there. There were a couple of librarians there. You were on the front row. At, you were napping. Yes, I know that is perfectly normal rodent behavior, but Roosevelt, when we have a meeting, you need to be paying attention. No, what? Stop. Roosevelt and I are happy to be joining you this summer online instead of in person. Now, we wish we could be at your library, but since we're not able to be, we, we covered it in the meeting. No, we're recording this right there on the camera. What are you doing? What do you need a mirror for? Oh. It says he has to look good for the camera. I'll let you keep doing that. Um, now, Roosevelt, we're going to be performing here. The kids will be watching us through the camera. And, um, Roosevelt. Roosevelt! You look great. That looks good. Good. Okay, sorry. Um, you guys ready for the show? Because I'm ready for the show. I know Roosevelt's ready for the show. Let's get started. Hey, you want to get closer to the camera? Okay. Closer. Closer. Roosevelt, that's plenty close enough. Roosevelt! Well, hello! Welcome to Tales of the Fun Expected. My name is Tommy Johns. I'm a magician, a puppeteer, a pretty funny guy, but mostly I'm a reader. I love to read. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love to read in the mornings. I love to read in the afternoons. I love to read in the evenings and all night long. Guess what I love to do? I love to sleep. You have to get a good night's sleep. Well, today's show is all about animals because all across your state and libraries everywhere, kids are going to be learning about and finding out more about animals. They're going to be reading about animals, hearing stories about animals. The theme for the summer is Tales and Tales. You've probably seen that somewhere on your library's Facebook page, or if you've been, a, been to your library, you've seen it there. Tales, the first one is T-A-I-L-S. That tells us that it's going to be about animals. And Tales, T-A-L-E-S, that's the second Tales of Tales and Tales. I think, I'm, yes, I think that's right. Tales and Tales. The second Tales is T-A-L-E-S, and that says that there are going to be some stories about animals. Well, today's show is about animals, and it's about books, and it's about stories, and you're going to have a lot of fun. You get to see some amazing magic. You get to see some wacky puppets. You'll get to help me with a magic trick from wherever you are. And if you hang around to the end, I'll teach you how to do a really cool magic trick that you can perform for your family and friends. But that's enough talk. Let's get started with the magic show right now. One of the very first magicians I ever saw on television was a man named Mark Wilson. Mark and his wife, Nani, had a Saturday morning TV show. It was the longest running magic show in the history of television. It was called The Magical Land of Alakazam. Mark Wilson also wrote this book, The Complete Course in Magic. Mark Wilson's Complete Course in Magic is one of the best magic books out there. It will teach you how to do all kinds of magic tricks, card tricks, coin tricks, um, tricks with borrowed items. You can do mind reading. He will show you how, even how to make somebody disappear. But more important than the tricks is that this book will teach you how to be a magician. It will teach you how to, how to have stage presence, how to, uh, how to talk to people how to uh, present yourself in such a way that people are amazed and mystified. I love this book, and even after 40 years in magic, I still refer to Mark Wilson's Complete Course in Magic whenever I get ready to, uh, to write a new show. Well, one of the classic magic tricks that I saw Mark Wilson perform on that uh, TV show was the classic trick of pulling a rabbit out of a hat. You've probably seen, or at least imagined, a, ma a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Well, to do that, you've got to have two things. You've got to have a hat, and you've got to have a bunny. Now, you might be wondering why I have this bunny instead of a real bunny. 
I'm going to let you in on a secret. I've never told anybody this before, and I'm only telling you, not everybody else, I'm allergic to bunnies. I know, I know, it's kind of, a, kind of, kind of embarrassing to be the magician who's allergic to bunnies, but uh, this is the only kind of bunny I can, uh, I can have around without sneezing. So I've got a bunny right here, and I've got a top hat, a picture of a top hat, and a picture of a bunny. We're going to recreate that classic trick of magic. Now, I read in the book that it says if you're going to produce a rabbit from a hat, before the show begins, you have to hide the rabbit in the hat. So I'm going to take this hat, I'm going to place, uh, place it over my fist like this. I'm going to place this, uh, place this bunny into the hat. Now, you have to hide it in a place where nobody can find it. And that's the, uh, that's the really fun part, because right now, before the show even starts, you've already kind of done a magic trick. You've hidden a bunny in the hat where no one can see it. Then when it's time to bring the bunny back out, you walk out on stage with your top hat. You say, ladies and gentlemen, I will now perform for your enjoyment the classic magic trick of producing a rabbit from a hat. You take the hat. You reach into the hat. But before you pull out the bunny, you say the magic words, alakazam. You wave your fingers in a magical gesture. You reach right into the hat, and you begin to pull out that bunny. Here's the really amazing part. When you pull that bunny out and nobody knew that that bunny was in there, they'll give you a thunderous round of applause, just like this one. And that's the trick called the rabbit in the hat. Hello, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Claudia. Claudia is a hippopotamus. Everybody knows me, you don't have to introduce me. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I'm famous! Uh, well, you're not quite famous like worldwide known. Uh, not everybody knows you. We've got a couple of new libraries here this year and some kids in the audience from the libraries where we've been before who haven't seen you before. Oh, everybody knows me! I, I, I don't think everybody knows you. That's why I'm introducing you. Claudia is a very talented uh, hippopotamus. She's a good friend of mine. I'm about to be famous! Well, what, are, what are you about to do? I'm going to go on AGT. I'm about to audition. AGT. Oh, America's Got Talent? No, silly. Animals got talent. <laughs> okay. I don't think I've seen that show. So what are you going to do? You're going to sing? You're going to dance? You're going to juggle? I can't do any of those things. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to tell jokes. I'm hilarious. I'm a comedian. I'm the hilarious hippopotamus. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Uh, so, so entertain us with a couple of jokes. What's black and white and red all over? Oh, I know the answer to this one. Black and white and red all over? A newspaper. It's black and white and it's red all over. No, it's a sunburned penguin. <laughs> okay. Why did the chicken cross the road? Oh, I know this one too. This is an oldie but a goodie. A uh, chicken crossed the road to get to the other side. No, because it was too long to walk around. <laughs> okay. Tell us another one. Where do cows go for entertainment? I don't know. To the movies. <laughs> All right. What did one fly, firefly say to the other? I don't know. You glow, girl. You, you glow. <laughs> That's pretty. Hey, why does a seagull fly over the sea? I don't know. If he flew over the bay, he'd be a bagel. Bagel, you get it? <laughs> I get it. Why couldn't the pony sing? I, I, I don't know. Why couldn't the pony, pony sing? Because she was a little horse. A little horse. You get it? <laughs> yeah, usually if you have to ask somebody if they get it, uh, that, that joke needs a little work. Hey, why was the, uh, why'd the dog do so well in school? Uh, why did the dog do so well in school? Because he was the teacher's pet. The teacher's pet. <laughs> okay. One more, one more. Okay. What creature is smarter than a talking parrot? I, I don't know. What? A spelling bee. <laughs> okay. We're going to work on these jokes a little bit. We'll be, uh, we'll be right back in just a little while. What do you mean work on the jokes? Those jokes are great. Those jokes are fantastic. When I was a kid, one of my favorite games to play was a game called Hide and Seek. Raise your hand if you love to play Hide and Seek. Me too. I was really good at it too. And one of the great things about hide and seek is that if you want to be a champion at hide and seek, you don't have to be the fastest. You don't have to be the biggest. You don't have to be the strongest and you don't have to be the smartest. And that was great news for me because I was none of those things. To play hide and seek, you need to know three big secrets. And I'm going to let you in on those three secrets right now. Secret number one, find a good hiding place. Secret number two, once you find a good hiding place, you have to be very still. 
And secret number three, you have to be very, very quiet. And if you want to be a champion, those are the things that you need to do. Did you know that some animals are experts at hide and seek? I have a couple of books I want to show you. One of them is called Undercover Animals, Discover Hide and Seek Superstars. It tells us about a lot of different ways that animals of all kinds hide from predators and hide from their prey. Another book is part of a series called the Nature Hide and Seek series by John Norris Wood and Kevin Dean. This one's about jungles, but he also has books, or they also have books, about, uh, about forest animals and about ocean animals and the different ways that they are able to hide. Would you like to play a little game of hide and seek right now? I brought along pictures of three animals and we're going to find out a little bit about how they hide. The first one is a cheetah. Cheetahs hide because of camouflage. They are naturally colored to blend in with the grasses and with the, uh, the weeds around them so that they can hide. They get real low and they move real slow and the animals that they're hunting don't see them until it's too late. An animal you might not expect to be very good at hiding is a rhinoceros. I know, I know, they're really big and, and they don't move real fast. Well, eventually they can go fast enough if they, if they start running. But uh, you might think they might not be great hiders, but there are two things that they do to hide. The first thing that they do is they roll around in the mud so that they become the same color as the, uh, as the landscape around them. As a matter of fact, I have seen pictures in these books where it's hard to find the rhinoceros because the rhinoceros was exactly the same color as the mud. The second trick that they use is, and most people don't know this, they paint their toenails different colors so that they can hide in a jar of jelly beans. I know, well, I, you've never seen them because they're so good at it, because it works. That's the really cool thing. Now, this next one is an expert at hide and seek because this next one can change and adapt to wherever he is. It's a chameleon. Now, we have seen lizards that change. Everywhere that you are, everywhere you go, you'll see a lizard. Well, maybe not every time of year, but you'll see lizards that will change colors so that they can blend in or be camouflaged. Chameleons are the best at that. Chameleons change colors. For instance, if a chameleon climbed up on a brown rock, it would turn brown. If a chameleon climbed up on a green leaf, it would turn green. If a chameleon climbed up on my khaki vest, I would scream and run. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I'm not scared at all of a, of a chameleon. Chameleons don't scare me at all. Anyway, we're going to play a little game with these three animals. And I want to see if you can guess ahead of time which is going to win the game. Now, who thinks that the, um, that the cheetah is going to win? Raise your hand if you think the cheetah is going to be the champion of hide and seek. Raise your hand if you think the rhinoceros is going to win. Who's on team chameleon? You think the chameleon's going to win? All right, well, we'll see. We're going to play a little game of hide and seek. What's going to happen is you are going to count to uh, five. You're going to say, ready or not, here we come. They're going to try to hide. See if you can figure out where they go. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Ready or not, here we come. And they're hiding and nobody knows where they are. What? Who said underwear? Oh, under there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. They're, they're not very good hiders. Who do you think will get caught first? That's right. That's right. The rhinoceros. The rhinoceros got caught first because, well, we didn't have a jar of jelly beans and it's not very muddy here in the studio. So the rhinoceros was not able to hide very well. Um, who do you think will get caught next? Well, everybody should have expected it because you've always heard cheetahs never win. <laughs> and I know it's an old joke, but I've been waiting the whole show to use it. And so, no, the cheetah wasn't able to win. The chameleon won. I should have told you before we started, the chameleon is the champion. The chameleon always wins. Nobody knows where the chameleon's hiding. That's the thing about the chameleon. The chameleon always hides in a different place. And what? Look under here? Okay, I'll look. I'll look. Nope. Not here. <laughs> what? You, you want to see? Okay, well, I'll show you. <laughs> it says, not here. <laughs> not here. At, Oh, you want me to turn it over? Okay, I'll turn it over. But if I turn it over, it still says not here. It's just upside down. Uh, oh, flip it around like that? <laughs> yeah, still says not here. It, oh, the other side. Well, on the other side, it says not here either. 
That's the thing about the chameleon. Nobody knows where the chameleon is. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can find the chameleon so that we can keep going with the show. Let's see if we can find the chameleon. The chameleon might be over here. It might... What? It's... Where? Oh... Ah! Ah! Get it off me! Ah! 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 I remember when I first read that the theme for this year in libraries all across the country was animals. I thought to myself, great, this is the summer, I'll take all the kids everywhere to the circus. But there are a couple of problems with that. First of all, there's lots of paperwork. You gotta get uh, people to sign permission forms, you gotta get their parents to show up on time to, uh, to bring them to the library, to take them to the circus. You gotta find out when the circus is gonna be in town. You've got to, uh, oh, you've got, you've got to get a bus and take them there. It's just really complicated. Then I thought, I'll just bring the circus to you. But there's no way I could fit the circus in my car. And, and for the video, there, I don't have room in my studio for a circus. But then I remembered reading this book. Fellini the Flea. Fellini works at a flea circus. Now, a flea circus is very small. As a matter of fact, I happen to have one right here. Let me tell you a little bit about Fellini. Fellini's family worked at the circus. They were great acrobats. His dad was the ringmaster. His mom was a contortionist. They were, oh, they were just amazing. But Fellini, he worked in the ticket booth. Not because his parents made him do it, but because he just didn't believe that he had any talent. You see, one of the problems was Fellini was missing a leg. And because he was missing a leg, he was afraid that the other fleas would make fun of him and he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to do anything. So he never really tried. But one day, a big drop of water hit the flea circus. Now, a drop of water, a raindrop, might not seem like much to you and me, and it wouldn't be much to you and me. But if you're as small as a flea, that's a big deal. He was out here in the ticket booth when the drop of rain fell into the circus tent, when he saw what was going on, he knew what he had to do as quickly as he could. He got to the circus, got to the tent, ran into the tent, and not even thinking of his own safety, dove right into the water, rescued someone, and jumped as high as he could. No one had ever seen a flea jump that high. Jumped all the way up, grabbed hold of the high wire at the top. He had rescued someone. He became a hero, and from that day forward, he was one of the featured acts at the flea circus. You can read all about Fellini the Flea and other flea circuses, books at your library. Now, I couldn't bring, of course, Fellini with me because he's famous and he's touring with that flea circus, but I was able to get his cousin, his cousin, Felina, Felina Gomez. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not that funny, but I just love that joke. It's one of my favorite ones in the show. Felina has a... Uh, um, has a, a, a dressing room here, and you can see Felina Gomez, superstar. And uh, let's see if she's here. Let's wake her up, and uh, um, we'll just, we'll just wait. Usually, if I tap, she'll she'll, she'll knock back. And I'm not, I'm not sure what's what's going on. So. Oh, she is in there. Okay, and one more. All right, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, Felina Gomez. All right, let's give Felina Gomez a big round of applause. And we're back with Felina the Flea. Now, Felina's an amazing acrobat, and in just a moment, you're gonna see her high wire act, which is pretty exciting. But uh, before we do that, I want you to meet her. I know she was really small, so you probably didn't get a chance to see her, so I brought her a magnifying glass. So let's take a look, and uh, there she is, ladies and gentlemen, Felina, Felina the Flea. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she great? All right, very good. All right, so um, so Felina is going to, uh, going to we're going to take this rope. Uh, do me a favor, Felina, just, just jump right over here on my shoulder. Good, good. And uh, we're going to take this rope. Felina is going to hold one end of the rope to start with. So, uh, so just jump out here, and you got it? Got it? Good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let go of this end, and um, we'll see if she can. She did it. Ladies and gentlemen, she's holding her end of the rope. I'm holding my end of the rope. Let's give her a big round of applause. All right, very good. All right, we'll jump back over here. Very good. Okay, good, good. And um, now, she's going to do um, uh, her tightrope act, and so I'm going to um, see if you uh, just go ahead and jump out there. You got it? Good. All right, she's on there, and she's starting to walk across. There she goes. Walking right across that side and back. 
You want to jump? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to uh, do a high jump. Here, ready? One, two, and she's up, and she lands. All right, very good. And up, and she lands again. Good. Let's swing, swing, swing right back over here on the shoulder. Very good. Let's give Felina a big round of applause. And we're back. We're back! <laughs> That's what I just said. I wanted to make an entrance. Okay, well, uh, we, we talked about your jokes from earlier, and I suggested maybe you try a different kind of joke. I've got a great time I want to try. All right, so what do you, what do you want to try? Knock, knock jokes. Knock, knock jokes. Knock, knock jokes can be very funny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Justin. Justin who? Just in time for dinner. Come on in. <laughs> okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Let us in, it's cold outside. <laughs> All right. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wooden shoe. Wooden shoe? Yes. Wooden shoe who? Wouldn't you like to hear another joke? <laughs> not, not, not really. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Atch. Atch who? Gesundheit. <laughs> okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry. I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> you you didn't scare. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cow says. Cow says who? No, silly. Cow says moo. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I've got one more. You got one more. Well, we don't have a lot of time, so so tell it quickly. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana again? How many of you have read at least one book by Kate DiCamillo? Maybe you've read The Tale of Despero or Because of Win Dixie, or maybe you've read that hilarious series, Mercy Watson, the story about the pig who lives with the family. I love that series. My favorite book by her, though, is this book called The Magician's Elephant. It tells the story of a fortune teller, a little boy, his sister, a magician, and an elephant. Now, in this story, the elephant appears, but in history, one of the greatest magic tricks ever performed was when an elephant disappeared. In 1918, a man named Harry Houdini made a 10,000 pound elephant disappear on the stage of the Hippodrome Theater in New York City. Harry Houdini was an amazing magician, probably his, one of history's most famous magicians. He lived over 100 years ago and he traveled all over the world. He was known for many different things, including card tricks and coin tricks. He was called the King of Coins, the King of Cards. Later, he was known as the King of Escapes. He could escape from anything, but most magicians believe that the biggest illusion he ever did was when he made a 10,000 pound elephant disappear. You can read about Harry Houdini and his amazing magic in this book, called A Picture Book of Harry Houdini by David Adler. It's illustrated by Matt Collins. And in here, he tells the story of in 1918 how he made that elephant disappear. Well, actually, he doesn't tell, him how, tell you how he made that elephant disappear. He simply tells you that he made an elephant disappear. Over the last 100 years, a lot of magicians have had many ideas about how he was able to do that. He kept his secrets to himself, and he didn't share them with other magicians. But I think I figured it out. Right now, I'm going to show you how I believe Harry Houdini made an elephant disappear. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present for your enjoyment the amazing vanishing elephant trick as performed by Harry Houdini. The year was 1918. It was January. It was snowing. It was cold, but that did not keep over a thousand people from standing in line outside with their ticket in their hand, ready to go into the Hippodrome Theater to see the world's most famous magician, Harry Houdini. The show was amazing. And then at the end of the show, he did what he promised he would do. He promised he would make a 10,000 pound elephant disappear. He brought an elephant out and paraded it up and down every aisle so that everyone could see that it was indeed a real elephant. Now, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I couldn't fit a real elephant inside our studio here, so this is going to have to do. But I believe I can show you what happened on that day. 
After he paraded the elephant around the theater, he had his uh, stage crew to come out and build a box. They showed the panels of the box. They were just ordinary boards. They let people come up and inspect and knock on them to make sure that there was nothing fishy at all about them. They placed those boards together and created a large box. They then took that elephant, marched it into the box. When they marched it into the box, Harry Houdini stood outside, waved his hands, said abracadabra, and made the amazing happen. That's right. He made a 10,000 pound elephant disappear. They took the box apart. Clearly, there was no way they could be hiding that elephant anywhere. People applauded like crazy. And for years, they talked about the amazing story, the amazing thing that they had seen at the Hippodrome that day where Harry Houdini made an elephant disappear. But I think I finally figured it out. Magicians for over a century have theorized and come up with ideas of how he did it. And I think what happened was, on the stage there in the Hippodrome Theater, he had a trap door. And the elephant fell underneath the, uh, uh, underneath the stage, right through into a, a net of some sort. And that's how the, uh, uh, the, the trick worked. Let me show you what I mean. He... Uh, Hardest part is getting the elephant back out of the trap door. But, uh, right here, I'm going to place this here, and I'm going to show you exactly how it worked. You see, you had a net under there to hold the, uh, hold the elephant. They built the box. Nothing at all fishy about the box. They put the box together right in front of everyone, just as I demonstrated earlier. They then placed that elephant into the box. When they placed the elephant into the box, he said the magic words, Abracadabra! and the elephant had vanished, completely and absolutely gone. I was pretty sure that this was how the trick was done. And then I read some more, and I discovered that there was no trap door at the Hippodrome Theater, that there was no way that that elephant could have fallen through the stage because there was nothing under there. So it's still a mystery. Raise your hand if you have a pet. I know, aren't pets so much fun? I've got a couple of books here about kids who wanted to find just the perfect pet. As a matter of fact, the first one is called The Perfect Pet. It's by Marjorie Palantini and it is uh, illustrated by Bruce Whatley. It's a really fun book about a girl who wants to find, well, the perfect pet. So she tries out a lot of different kinds of pets, and well, if you want to see what she chose, you'll have to read the book. I think you'll be surprised. I know I was. In this book, the boy knows exactly what he wants. The book is called I Wanna Iguana, and it's by Karen Kaufman Orloff. David Catrow is the illustrator of this book. And it's hilarious because not only are the pictures great and the story's a lot of fun about a kid who wants an iguana for a pet, the story is told in notes that's left. The kid leaves a note for his mom saying he wants an iguana, and the mom says, well, that's a lot of responsibility. And so back and forth, you read their notes, and it's just so much fun to read. Sometimes we read a series, and in the series, somebody's pet plays a big role. In the Nate the Great series, this book is Nate the Great and the Monster Mess, but in the Nate the Great series, he has a dog named Sludge. Now, his best friend has a dog named Fang, and Fang doesn't really like Nate very much, but Sludge is his pet, and Sludge, the dog, helps him solve the mysteries. I brought along one of my pets today. His name is Teeny. He's a dog. Would you like to meet him? Yeah, Teeny lives in this little yellow doghouse right here, and I keep him on a leash because, um, well, <laughs> He's just a puppy, and he runs all around the office like crazy And uh, if I don't keep him on a leash. So I've got a leash right here. Let's do, do me a favor. Everybody call. Say, here, Teeny, here, Teeny. And everybody say, hello to my pup, Teeny. He's at... Oh, no. <laughs> Teeny's not in his little yellow doghouse. Maybe, maybe he's in his little black doghouse. We'll have to call him again. We'll have to call him again and see if we can find him. Everybody call him. Do me a favor. Say, here, Teeny, here, Teeny. All right, I reach right down in there, and it's Teeny. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my dog. Oh, no, it's Teeny's clothes. That means my dog is naked. Well, maybe he's not in his little black doghouse, but he could be here in his little red doghouse. Let's check and see if he's in his little red doghouse. I'll just reach right in there, and uh, 
What is that? It's a rubber chicken. <laughs> oh my God. Roosevelt, we got to we got to talk. You'll meet Roosevelt in a little bit. He's my pet rat and He's always up to some kind of mischief. Well, he's not in his little red dog house, but he could be in his little white dog house. Let's check and see if he's in his little white dog house. And uh, here we go. Let's all call him again and say, here, teeny, here, teeny. And right down. Oh, I think I've got him by the leg. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my the <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> There's only one other place he could be, and that would be right here in his green dog house. Let's check and see if he's in the green dog house. I'm going to take a peek, and oh, he is in here, ladies and gentlemen. It's my dog, Teeny. He's a happy dog. He's wagging his tail. It's a okay, he's a balloon dog. <laughs> I'm going to uh, bring him out here, see if we can get him to be a dog. Okay, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's my dog. I... <laughs> Sorry, let's try this again. <clears throat> okay, I'm real not into this time because the other joke's only funny once. And <laughs> all right, now Teeny, here we go. Right, Teeny has a cute little nose, cute little ears. He's got cute little front feet. He's got cute little back feet. And right on the end of his cute little tail, it's a poodle dog. Everybody say, yay, Teeny! All right, now I told you Teeny can do some tricks. Here we go. All right, Teeny, roll over. Play dead. Stay, Teeny, stay. Let's give him a big round of applause for my puppy, Teeny! One of my favorite parts of every show that I do is when I get to invite someone from the audience to come up and help on stage. Because this is a video, I can't exactly do that, but I do want to involve you in helping me do the magic. Here we have the names of nine animals that can be found in national parks around the United States. Opossum, mink, bison, wolf, otter, deer, moose, bear, and fox. These nine animals have some things in common. All are mammals and all are native to the United States. And all of them are going to help you do some magic. I need you to come close to the screen. If there's more than one person in the room, select one person to participate for the whole group. Now it needs to be someone who can follow directions carefully. Get that person to come close to the screen and follow these directions. Now, I'm in my studio and you are, well, wherever you are, but we're gonna do some magic together. In just a moment, you're going to spell the name of one of these animals. Hold your finger right above that animal's name on the screen. Now, don't touch the screen because that might pause the video. Just hold your finger close to over one of the animals. Don't start yet, but I'm going to ask you to spell that animal's name moving one space for every letter. Now, there are a couple of rules. First of all, you can only move side to side or up and down. The second rule is that you must move with every letter or every number. For instance, if you pick the mink, you could go M, I, N, K. Or you could go a different route. You could go M, I, N, K, or even M, I, N, K, and backtrack. It's entirely up to you. There are a lot of different moves you can make, so go ahead, pick your animal, put your finger above that animal, and spell out that animal's name. Go ahead right now. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, I don't know exactly where you are, but I do know that you're not on the fox, so we'll just take the fox away. And let's see, I also have a feeling that the moose is loose. So I'm going to take the moose out of the mix, too. Now, you cannot go to those spaces because there's not an animal there anymore. All right, now you're on an animal. Maybe it's the one you started with. Maybe it's a different one. We're going to move again, but we are not going to spell that animal's name. This time, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to move five spaces, so move your finger five times. 
Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I see what you did there. Oh dear, oh dear, you're not on the deer. And as unbearable as I think it is, I don't think you're on the bear either, so we'll take the bear out of there. Now we have five animals left. The opossum, the mink, the bison, the wolf, and the otter. Now this time, just move your finger one time. Just one space, go ahead. Okay. Well, I guess we have to say, bye, son. <laughs> and I don't know exactly where you are, but you ought or not be on this animal. So now we have three animals left. The wolf, the opossum, and the mink. I want you to move your finger three times. One, two, three. Okay, good. That's interesting. I think, I think, I think you're not on the mink. At least two, the possum and the wolf. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not me, so we'll take the wolf away. And I believe that that means that you wound up on the opossum. Wow, that was pretty cool. Here are a few interesting facts about the opossum. The opossum is North America's only marsupial. A marsupial is an animal that has a pouch for carrying babies. Another interesting fact, when a female opossum has babies, she usually has a litter of between 16 and 20 babies at a time. Wow! Opossums also have more teeth than any other North American mammal. 50 teeth to be exact. You can learn more about possums and all kinds of other animals by finding books in the library. Well, we're back! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, we are. I was telling Claudia during the break that uh, while people love a good joke or a good riddle, that uh, people really love stories. As a matter of fact, the theme for the summer is Tales and Tales, T-A-I-L-S for animals, and Tales, T-A-L-E-S, for, uh, for stories. And so I was wondering if you might to tell us a funny story. Do you know any funny stories? I've got the perfect story! Okay, uh, why, don't, why don't you tell the kids? All right, so, uh, so once upon a time, there were these animals, they were at the farm, and they were very bored. They, they, they were bored? They, they had nothing to do. All right, so what did they do? They went into the town to see if they could find something to do. Well, what, what happened? Well, they found a building where the kids looked really happy, and the grown-ups looked really happy, and everybody was going there. Well, what, what was the building? It was the library. Well, that's, that's a great place to go. So they went to the library, and one by one, they went in and walked up to the desk. The, the animals from the farm walked up to the desk at the library? Yes, first was the cow. The cow walked up and she said, Excuse me, ma'am, may, uh, may I please have something fun to do? I, I did not realize that cows could talk to people. Well, that's not what the librarian heard. The librarian didn't understand cow. So what did the librarian hear? Her, hear? Moo! <laughs> okay, uh, so what happened? Well, the cow knew she wasn't being understood, so she hung her head and she walked out. That's kind of sad. There, there's more! Okay, so what happened next? Well, next the duck came in. Oh, the duck came in. What, what did the duck say? The duck was very polite and said, Excuse me, ma'am, do you have something here that I can do? Okay, uh, but of course the librarian didn't understand her. No, because she, all the librarian heard was quack, quack, quack. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, so what happened next? Next was the pig. Same kind of thing happened. Very politely, the pig said, Excuse me, ma'am, is there something here that we can do? But of course, the librarian didn't understand it. I'm telling this story. Okay. The librarian didn't understand it because the, the librarian couldn't speak pig. All she heard was, oink, oink, oink. So this sounds like a very sad story. No, it's really funny. Listen. Okay. So what happened next? Well, then the chicken went in. And the chicken walked right up on the desk and looked right at the librarian and said, Book! Book, book, book! The librarian understood that. She said, Oh, do you want some books? And everybody was happy. Okay, so that, that sounds very good. That's not the end of the story. Uh, okay. All right, so the librarian gave the chicken some books. She gave books to all the animals. 
Oh, okay. They all checked it out. It's pretty easy to get a library card. Even a kid could get, a, get one. Not a baby goat, a real kid. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, so she gave them the books. Then they went back to the farm and they all had a good time. All of them except for one animal. What, what animal didn't enjoy books? Everybody enjoys books. What animal wouldn't enjoy books? The frog. Every time the frog looked at one of the books, he said, read it, read it, read it. The story that Claudia just told is from this book, 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 by Deborah Bruss and illustrated by Tiffany Beck. It's a really fun book and it's longer than the story she just told and one of the things you need to look for is look for the frog on every page. This is a great picture book. It's a lot of fun to read, a lot of fun to look at the pictures, and it's a really funny story that I think you'll enjoy. I'm really excited because this is the game show portion of our program. Every time I do a live show at a library or a school, I always include a contest of some sort. I get someone from the audience to come up and play the game. If they win the game, they get a prize and so does everybody in the audience. Unfortunately, this is a video and I can't bring somebody up on stage with me to play the game and so I was afraid I was going to have to leave this part out. But then my good friend Roosevelt, you met him at the beginning of the show, my good friend Roosevelt, he, uh, he came up with a great idea. He came up with a great idea for a contest and a great way to do it. And so I'm going to explain that to you right now. Before the show started, I got Claudia, she's the hippopotamus you met earlier, I got Claudia to put a stuffed animal in this box and cover it up. I have no idea what's inside. I also have two coloring books of my favorite animals. And what I'm going to do is in just a few moments when Roosevelt joins us, I'm going to flip through this book. And Roosevelt's going to choose one of these animals. Now you see they're all different kinds of animals, and both books are exactly the same. This book has the same animals in it. You might recognize a few of these animals, like the, uh, the chameleon and some of the others. You may have seen them earlier in the show. Well, he's going to guess uh, what is in here by telling me to stop on one of those pages. And to make it more difficult, he's got to match two of those for the big prize. Now, if he matches one of them, everybody here gets a prize. Everybody that's watching, I will teach you how to do a magic trick. But here's the cool thing. If he gets it right on both of those books and both of those books match the big prize, the uh, stuffed animal that's over here, everybody in the audience gets to learn a bunch of really cool magic tricks. We're ready to play the game. Roosevelt will be joining us in just a moment. He's in his office downtown, and he couldn't be here in the studio, but uh, he did agree to join us on Whoosh. Now, Whoosh is similar to Zoom, and, um, well, it's just cheaper, but uh, it's just like Zoom. And, uh, oh, well, there he is now. Hey, Roosevelt, can, can you see us? Can, can you hear me? Yeah, good to see you. Hey, Roosevelt. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, okay, we see you waving. You can, you can stop waving. Oh, uh, he says he wants you to wave back at him, so everybody wave. Good. All right, Roosevelt, that's enough. Roosevelt, we've got to play the game. Roosevelt, stop waving. Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Roosevelt! Sorry. Now, now we're going to play the game. We, I have already explained to the kids how it works, and I've explained it to you in our, in our meeting. We've got the stuffed animal here that Claudia chose. I don't have any idea what it is, and we've got animals, pictures of animals over here in these books. And just to show the kids one more time all the different animals that are in the book, that book and this book are exactly the same. You see some of the same animals, or see, you should see all the same animals in, uh, in those two books. One of the uh, things that we're going to do is I'm going to flip through these one at a time, and Roosevelt, you're going to ring a bell. When you ring that bell, I'll know that it's time to stop. The kids will know that it's time for me to stop. And what I'll do is I'll flip through the books. You'll say stop. I'll close the book or open the book up so that they can't see what's on this side. I'll set it here, and then we'll do the other book. We'll see if you um, see if you're able to guess one of them. Now remember, if Roosevelt gets one of these right, I'll teach you how to do a magic trick. And if Roosevelt gets both of them right, I'm going to teach you how to do a bunch of magic tricks. Sadly, if Roosevelt gets neither one of these right, well, this is the end of the show today. We'll see what happens. Roosevelt, are you ready? Good. Good. Stop ringing the bell. Roosevelt, stop. Ro Roosevelt, stop ringing the bell. Wait and ring the bell when it's time. All right, you ready? Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's cheer him on. All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to flip through the book. 
I'm going to flip through the book and you tell me when to stop. I'm not even going to look, okay? I'm flipping through the book. You can see the pages are turning and right there. I can keep going if you want me to. You want right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he said right there. We're going to set that book up right here. All right? And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to see if he can get these to match and uh, and get him to match over here. So, uh, are you ready? Good. Stop, stop ringing the bell. Ro Roosevelt. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Right there. Oh, keep going. Right there. Good. All right, good. Just like that and set it right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. I'm going to show you what he chose. Now, remember, if one of these match over here, I'll teach you how to do a magic trick. If they match each other and matches what's in the box, I'll teach you a bunch of magic tricks. And if neither one of them match, well, uh, stop, stop ringing the bell. Stop ringing the bell. Uh, okay, good. So, all right, so if neither one of them match, then, uh, then the show's over and we've had a great time together. So here we go. Let's see. The first one is the giraffe. All right, we've got a giraffe. Now, if there's a giraffe in the box, then uh, you'll learn at least one magic trick. And uh, let's see what's on the other one. The other one, oh man, it's the zebra. What? But don't don't be don't be concerned. Don't be worried because one of these could still match what's in the box. And if it matches, remember you get to learn a magic trick, which is pretty cool. All right, here we go. Cue the music. All right, and we uncover it and. Weird. It's a, it's a giraffe. It's a giraffe and a zebra combined. <laughs> wow. You know what that means? That means you win the game. Everybody wins the game. Roosevelt wins. Roosevelt, stop winning the bell. Stop it. Okay. You win. This is great. That means I get to teach you a bunch of really cool magic tricks. And wait a minute. If the heads are here. Things are in the box. Oh, oh no, gross! <laughs> Yuck! Alright, congratulations, Rose Bell. Congratulations, kids. I'll be right back. Before I teach you the magic trick, of course, I've got to talk about books because the whole show is about books. And you're probably wondering, how in the world are you going to find a book about a half giraffe, half zebra, and two to animal hineys. <laughs> well, I've got two books for you. One of them is this one, The Scoop on Animal Poop, From Lions to Tapeworms, 251 Cool Facts About Scat, Frass, Dung, and More. <laughs> Did you know that scientists can tell a lot about animals, what they eat, where they go, what happens to them, their migratory patterns, by examining their poop? Now, of all the science jobs in the world, <laughs> I'm glad that's not mine. <laughs> this is a really cool book and it's got some uh, some interesting and kind of gross pictures in it, but it uh, tells you all about different kinds of animals and what we can learn about those animals by studying animal poop. <laughs> this book is a curious collection of peculiar creatures, an illustrated encyclopedia. Now, a half giraffe, half zebra would certainly be an unusual creature, a peculiar creature. And this book tells you all about animals that are really strange, like uh, like the blobfish and the proboscis monkey and all sorts of really amazing creatures. Your library is full of books about animals, interesting, unusual animals, ordinary animals, house pets, all kinds of other things. I encourage you to check out some books at your library. Everybody knows that a moose is larger than a mouse. But watch what happens if we do a little magic. Wave the magic wand and now the mouse is much larger than the moose. Or so it seems, until you put them back down and discover that the mouse really is larger than the moose. There are two optical illusions at play here. One of them is the optical illusion of perspective. When you have the um, these two laying here like this, and then you pick this up and bring it closer to the camera, the mouse looks larger than the moose. That's one of the things that happens when we see something outside and something looks far, something is far away, and it looks smaller because of how far away it is. The moon, for instance, in the sky looks small 
but if we were close up to it, obviously we would know just how big it is. So the distance from your eye can affect how big you think it is. Here's the other thing that's really interesting. When I lay that down, it really does look like the mouse is now larger than the moose. Here's the secret. Because of the curve, this creates an illusion. You see, these two are actually exactly the same size. But when one is above the other, the one that's on top looks smaller, and the one that's on the bottom looks larger. So if we want the moose to be larger than a mouse, all we have to do is switch the places again and move this one over. Now, if you put it directly over the top of it, it doesn't look that much different in size. But if you put the edges so that it looks like they both start in the same place, it looks like the moose is a much longer curve than the mouse. If you'll go to this website, I'll leave that up for just a second while I continue talking so you can write it down. But if you go to that website, you can get a copy of these that you can print out and color the way you want and do this, cut them out very carefully and then do this trick for your friends. You can make the mouse smaller or you can make the mouse larger. There's even an extra set so that if you make a mistake or if you'd like to share this magic trick with one of your friends, you can do that. That website again, on this web page, you will also find video instructions for over a dozen magic tricks that you can do. You can learn these magic tricks and use them to amaze and entertain your friends. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the show. This has been a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing you next summer. Have a great day, and don't forget to read.